Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We have so many stories developing over the weekend. The first and most important is the fact that we have a sovereign uh, territory, Crimea, that was till 1954 when a drunken stupor uh, Khrushchev gave away the Crimea, which is part of the Russian Empire before it was the Tsars and later the Soviet Union, until 1954. Historically, it's also been a deep water port, an important military base, and also transshipment for oil and gas, or protection of oil and gas, that goes through the central area, and of course the Black Sea port access for the nuclear fleet, etc. So uh, there's a treaty that they have, which, by the way, they haven't violated the treaty. Putin has actually been taking very measured steps in this area. Uh, I know he's not necessarily, quote, a good guy. I know some people in Russia don't like him because he does put the boot on him. Uh, the uh, Jewish oligarchs that run the banks in Russia, and by the way, they are Jewish oligarchs, are not integrated with a globalist bank system because he won't permit it. And only the oligarchs that take him off or try to go after Putin get removed. So we know that he's not all, quote, 100%, but if they don't bother him, he won't bother them. Just like he says, don't go after our young people if you're gay. Uh, and if you do, it's against the law now in Russia. And he won't tolerate the groups like, uh, you know, the uh, pussy riot idiots that are there trying to further degrade the Russian population or the NGOs, non-government organizations, that are trying to destroy the culture from the inside out. But there are magazines like Cosmopolitan that's still pretty degenerate that gets published in Russia. But by and large, it's pretty tame. It's like 1950s USA. Uh, what we have is a situation where uh, we're going to have sanctions. I can't believe this. 93% of the people vote to join Russia, which is where their history and the majority of the population is. And yet America says we're incensed. We're, we don't believe this, even though there are international observers there. Uh, yeah, Tim, this, yeah. this story gets worse by the day, doesn't it? It's just, yeah, yeah it's, Dr. Uh, Bill. Actually, the, the latest figures show that 96.6 or 96.7, de depending on how you where you want to uh, average it out to, uh, have voted for independence and in joining Russia. Now, uh, it's amazing that uh, the West is rejecting this and still saying that they're pro-democracy. Uh, the West basically funded the uh, fascist military coup that replaced the elected uh, president. Many of the uh, parliamentarians who voted for the unconstitutional impeachment of the president had their children or wives kidnapped and held by the fascist thugs. And we're talking true fascism. These people give the, the Nazi salute. They have Nazi type uh, insignias and flags. And I mean, that is repugnant. And in the United Kingdom, uh, the one thing across the board that all political classes uh, uh, pretty much agree on, and the people uh, almost unanimously agree on, is that the Brits, uh, they define themselves in the modern era as having stood up, fought, and defeated fascism. And yet uh, Cameroon and the, the, the loyal opposition, as well as the government, is supporting uh, these, these fascist bastards that uh, yeah, I, it's are, hard are to believe simply it. despicable. Yeah, I, if you actually were to transport back in time the statements of these current politicians to the era where the Brits destroyed fascism from Nazi Germany, they'd be shocked to see literally oh, yeah. the, the one of the worst forms of, of Nazi fascism, which is in Ukraine, we're its ugly head and we support it in Britain and America. And, and of course now the Chinese are chiming in and saying, don't dare put sanctions on Russia, their ally. And they know well, that uh, the, the, the sanctions bit today has is, is really been interesting. European and Russian stocks, uh, the stock markets have really surged. Uh, and the reason is that the, the sanctions that have been imposed by the United States and the EU today have been uh, little, or not, I wouldn't even say little more than a slap on the wrist. They literally are a slap on the wrist. Now, keep in mind the Ukrainian crisis is not over. You yeah, exactly. have all these cities in eastern Ukraine that the people are, are demanding the right to vote and exactly. to break away and do exactly what the Crimean did. And within within 60 days, I expect Donetsk in the east and Kharkiv in the north, uh, these uh, breakaway, if you want to call it sub-republics, will join Russia. Uh, the the uh, Maidan party and the sector right, which is an extreme fascist party, has already called in their people to start attacking the oil and gas pipelines across well, uh, if, the... If they do that, if they do that, <laughs> then you'll see both 
uh, Belarusia, which has put its entire military on alert, and they're, they're to the north and border of Ukraine, and Russia invade the west as well as the east because all their pipelines from Belarusia and Russia go through western Ukraine. And uh, if, if that natural gas is shut, uh, Germany and a number of other countries will cease to have the ability to generate uh, electricity. P- there will be massive blackouts. Uh, throughout yeah, Western yeah, yeah, yeah. and Central yeah. Europe. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a third of a billion people without power. We're talking about industry yeah. shut down in Europe. And by the way, uh, Russia already has ways to also destroying with the petrodollar, which means 30% of the world's reserve currency. And I don't think people are ready for this yet, but I've been predicting this for several years, that this year is the most likely year, especially as April on. We know the first blood moon is April 15th on tax day, believe it or not. It is, <laughs> it is Passover. And uh, if you look, take the 16-month calendar, we're trying to get Mark Biltz back on. He's got an incredibly busy schedule. But I was watching him on Gary Stearman's show on Prophecy in the News, and he repeated this on the last program he said with us, is that the four blood moons, the last one ends up on September 28th, 2015. And it turns out two weeks before is a super, is, it's not only a super blood moon, but it's visible in Israel. It turns out it's the end of what's called the Shemitah year, which is the seventh year, which in the seventh year, of course, all the debts are forgiven and it's supposed to reset. What I was told, and I wrote in Clay and Iron, 1988, and released in 1999 in the book Clay and Iron, is that that is the exact same day that the last seven years starts, when the blood sacrifice is sanctified on the Temple Mount of Sakat, the first day after a Shemitah year. Which is uh, which is yeah. Uh, well, the, if you look at uh, there have been uh, thirty some uh, attacks by uh, Israeli settlers on the Temple Mount on on Palestinians mm-hmm. worshiping on the Temple Mount in less than a month. Well, and I think they, they the already Israeli they, police they, are just standing by watching it. Well, the reason is the Israeli the most, uh, that, that little hunk of land, which is so the, sacred, yeah, the three religions, uh, is the most yeah, t- dangerous bit of real estate on earth well they have a they built an underground mosque underneath the temple they have the uh, al-aqsa mosque on top which is relatively smaller and what's happening is that in, in a year after i went there in 1999 on the feast of of uh, of yom teruah which is the first day of the jewish new year i spoke a prayer in hebrew at the elihim perazim drill site at the southwest end of the dead sea the largest batholith of oil on the planet the largest amount of oil in one place on the planet an ocean of oil at 25, 28 to 35,000 feet down. And what's happening now is that uh, all the signs are coming together that there will be either a peace treaty or a great war in the Middle East, like right away. And with the, yeah, and the, also, there's a linkage. Uh, uh, how, there's, uh, how this the Ukrainian thing can tie in. Remember, it's not. Oh, tied all, they're yet. all linked together. They're all linked together. If oh, there's absolutely. An attack but on, here, but here, here's the thing you have to ask yourself. Uh, because the globalists uh, and, and Zionists spent a lot of money and time and effort to set this crisis up. It's created. Okay, they spent five right. billion U.S. dollars. Uh, Soros spent a lot of Rothschild money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Was now what was the goal? Was the goal to create the tipping point to collapse the global economy to drive us into their one world uh, currency, which will be the mark of the beast? Or and or I, sh- I guess I should say, was it designed to to begin the third world war? I'm. I, I, my gut feeling says that it could be the Third World War, but I don't quite think that we're there I think, yet. I think, I think you're right, I, but I, I think, think it's, that the, I, the currency may be the key. I think yeah, you're right. I think what happened is it's both, but the currency is going to come first. And yeah. uh, what I think is happening behind the scenes is people don't realize that the Russian banking system is still run by Jewish oligarchs, but they're not integrated with the world banking system. And as long as they don't attack Putin, he leaves them alone. If they attack him like uh, Kordakovsky, uh, they get put in prison. So what yeah, I think is going to uh, happen, yeah, what I think is going to happen is that Putin is going to precipitate a spasm of the world economy. They'll come to the table. They'll work on a peace treaty. So if they try to attack Syria, Iran, the world economy will crash, and there'll be a big nuclear war right, right away. So we know the peace treaty is probably going to come by this summer, and by next year, they'll probably start the blood sacrifice and start the seven year. Welcome back, and uh, Tim, let's do a further analysis. Uh, here's what the plays I see. Russia is usually three or four steps ahead of the West. The West are like, you know, old grandmothers with Alzheimer's disease, uh, you know, 110. 
Uh, and, and Putin is just laughing. It's like, here's what will happen next. You, uh, you have ratification within probably 30 days. Uh, Crimea will become formally Russia. Uh, you'll have a number of other breakaway republics like Donetsk and Kirkov in the north that will break off and ask for it within 60 days. So I expect uh, before the summer you'll have most of Ukraine in the south and the west um, in the east, I mean, will will join and become literally formally parts of Russia. Um, yeah, that, that, you, you're right, and I agree with that. And then I expect that also that uh, whether, but whether here's it's a, the wild card, and, and we were well, just talking about this. On we we talked about the wild card. I'll let you do this, because I think that honestly this is the next step. I'm pretty certain that Ukraine, either the sector right party, which are these Nazi maniacs, or Maidan, will attack the pipelines, or the Russians will decide to do a false, you know, a call flag. Yeah, yeah they, exactly. They, they, they threaten to. Of course, right now, what you have is the battle of special forces. The, right. uh, we have sent in hundreds of, uh, of American, uh, oh, what do they call themselves now? Starts with an A, the uh, Blackwater, they, they renamed. Black, Blackwater, but but you know what? Their wives and, and their girlfriends and so on better take really good pictures of them because they're not getting them back. When the Russians uh, finish with them, they're a long way from home yeah, and they're not fi- they're not fighting. They're not coming. Uh, they're not. Yeah, they, if they take on the Russians, they're not coming home to mama in the, in uh, the Russian backyard. But it, but yeah. It, it could be a false flag, too, because uh, if the uh, Spitzba or commandos decide to blow up a couple of pipelines, that's the excuse that both Russia and Belarus need to move in. And the Belarusians have fully mobilized their army. They're ready to move south. And uh, the, the, oil, the natural gas pipelines are key to the Russian and Belarusian economies. And, quite frankly... Uh, there's not a replacement uh, ready uh, for Western Europe. Germany will have rolling blackouts, and a large part of Germany and uh, parts of uh, uh, both Western and Central Europe will have rolling blackouts, and and uh, because they use the natural gas to generate electricity. So, right. Well, is, and by the uh, way, we're only we're only six months away from winter again, and so if they do this next winter, the winter of 2015, 2016. Uh, 1415 I mean we will be seeing you'll see you'll see many many hundreds of thousands of people freeze to death in the dark yeah but uh, well you know uh, I my my feeling all along is that Russia will have both the Crimean and Eastern Ukraine, and almost certainly all of the Ukraine when all. I think so. I, I think that they're, all they're doing now with uh, Putin, with Obama, and uh, and uh, and the other idiots like McCain is they're trying to save face by really, you know, bellowing out all their objections and putting on slaps on the wrist on the Russians, and uh, the Russians are vetoing all the actions of the United Nations. I don't well, think this know, is going to go uh, anywhere. Uh, Veterans Today, I think it was yesterday, I'm trying to find it here on my site, had a really good article on John McCain. And uh, You mean Citizen Kane? Is that what yeah, you said? Citizen Kane. Well, I want to yeah. tell you, the, the other POWs that served with him have an extraordinarily negative view of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they think he sold out. Uh, of course, his father and grandfather were four-star Navy admirals, and his father was the delightful individual that followed uh, J- or, uh, LBJ's orders and allowed the Israeli Air Force to uh, uh, try to sink our, our spy ship and blame it on the Egyptians. Um, well, I can't find it right, but there's a whole list of questions on veterans today, uh, yesterday, on John McCain. And I want to tell you, the, the, these questions come from his fellow POWs. Oh, here they are. Let me, let me run through this real quick. Uh, here are our questions to Senator McCain. One, why did you have your service record in POW debriefing classified forever? Two, did you provide military secrets to North Vietnam as stated by Colonel Earl Hopper of Army Intelligence? Three, did you narrate, and let me increase this so I can read it better here. Uh, three, did you narrate 32 propaganda broadcasts for the North Vietnamese and give interviews to communist papers as stated, as stated at www. McCain betrayed betrays POWs.com. That's 
www.mccain. Yeah, that's been known for decades. Uh, he's almost he's almost like a, they bring out this crazy man by the name of well, McCain. There's more, and, and interesting. Yeah. Four, ha, why have you kept your presidential pardon secret? Did you know that you're the only person serving in Congress with a presidential pardon? Five, was Colonel Hopper accurate when he accused you of providing flight paths and altitude information to North Vietnamese gunners to help them shoot down American planes? Six, are you aware that Colonel Ted Guy was in the process of preparing treason charges against you when you received your presidential pardon? Seven, why did you work to end all POW inquiries? Why are you referred to as the Manchurian candidate by POW MIA groups? Now, but those are really yeah, that's really bad. Stuff. And then and he had but, the but same he thing. Yeah, I'm about World War Three. Yeah. When when the 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 straw guy, when this this jerk Obama, who we don't really know who his father was, his mother was, where he was born, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, when he was running, they were running McCain against him. So we were given oh, yeah, a yeah. choice. Yeah. They did the same thing in the state D legislature. And dumb. Two traitors. Well, well, they did the same thing in the state legislature for the office he had there. They set up yeah. a faux candidate, and then all of a sudden, here's Obama out of nowhere. Um, you know, I had a physicist on the show and his wife four years ago, and they were over in Russia in the early uh, 90s and met with the physicists there. They're also members of the GRU, which is a secret agency, like the CIA here, and they said that your future president would be Mil Barack Obama. The GRU is military intelligence. In right, Russia. and yeah, but they have a little broader thing than just military intelligence. I know they own a lot of stuff because apparently GRU is also has arms in the financial side, so at the end of the Cold War in 1989, they had $189 billion in assets internationally. So... They had they had money stuffed everywhere. Well, the um, CIA is really into into dope, but that <laughs> yeah, they got money too. They got lots of dope money. Uh, let's summarize. We've got that now. We have the issue of Fukushima. They're near the end of the fuel rods. They're easy to pull. It's likely to either have subsidence or blow or have an earthquake. We had a, a pretty large earthquake here uh, out in Los Angeles, four point something or other, just this morning. And actually, we had something fall off one of our showers then, so it was close enough. And high enough, and you know, strong enough. I had one a few days ago. It was a 6.9 just off Northern California. Well, actually, within the last three days, there's been a uh, a, a large number of fairly low power earthquakes all over the globe, particularly uh, in the uh, the Ring of Fire. In the Pacific. Well, we're approaching what's called the uh, spring equinox, and uh, spring equinox is a time of danger for earthquakes. So, yep. Uh, I when think we that come uh, back. Uh, the Ukraine is not the only uh, part of the world that's in danger of uh, breaking up, and there's a big election going on in Italy, in the north of Italy, that may break up the Italian Republic. Ah, Venezia, the black Yellow. nobility. Back in a moment with him. Welcome back, and... Uh, yeah, this is what I see happening this year. I think that we're going to see Russia on the move to take back Ukraine, start to re-exert the Soviet Empire. You're going to see, uh, I think, a big economic correction that's going to occur this year. And, and they, I think they want to provoke this crisis with Russia so that they can use it as cover for the correction in the economy because they've been printing money like crazy. And uh, almost certainly, uh, I see a devaluation of the dollar by up to 70% or more. I think that's very likely to we have a caller, James. Be more because uh, you know, uh, if if we get to the point where the dollar loses yeah. its status as as the global uh, uh, currency, see, the dollar has for decades now been worth more than gold because gold is something physical; you have to store it. For the dollar, it essentially, it's just numbers yeah. on on electronic yeah. computer. We, we have a uh, caller uh, in uh, Oklahoma. Your name and where you're calling from? Uh, James from Oklahoma. James, you had a question and a comment. Go ahead. Well, I I heard that uh, about a, a meteor that was coming in. He was on the Prophecy Club, and he he didn't say how wide it was. Though he said it would cause a, a thousand foot tidal wave and probably two hundred foot tidal wave on the east coast. 
Yeah, actually, we're having a meteor shower right now, and there's some large meteors kind of cross uh, in mid to in mid to April, some run Passover and thereafter. Uh, and some of these are quite large. We're talking about ones that are you know a mile across and so on. These uh, well, there's asteroids. There's also the Canary Island. There's a there's uh, right, a that's cliff. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you're talking about Cumbra yeah. Viejo, which could be pushed off by a, a slide of two-thirds of the island, which a very minor earthquake could cause that. And they've been monitoring for the past 30 years. It's it's going to go. We just don't know when. Uh, if they hit it with a missile, for example, the Russians decide or somebody put a small nuke there, it would go, like, right away. It would produce an 800 to It would take out a lot of the East Coast. Yeah, it would go 1 to 300 miles on the East Coast and wipe out most of the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States, Canada, uh, Europe, etc. It would be very devastating. And, of course, it means you, the rest of the United States would decay to civil war and uh, martial law, etc., whatever's left, because it would kill somewhere around 100 million Americans. He was talking about 200 million people dying and uh, could have a tsunami on the African yeah, coast. I, I, well, here's what's happening. U.S. Base Command has technology to knock these out. They have, uh, they monitor everything right down to the size of a pencil eraser, so these things don't come in without them having fairly good knowledge. They can even move our military and other satellites to get out of the way of some of these uh, meteors. Uh, it's my contention, for example, that the, the there's several possibilities of the Malaysian flight. Uh, number one was terrorism, which you would expect them to report, which they haven't, which means it's not likely terrorism. Uh, number two is a structural failure, because they did have a tarmac problem. Uh, very unlikely these have super high ratings, uh, probably the best rating of any airline in the world is Malaysian Airlines, and the best aircraft is the Boeing 777. The yeah, third is Malaysian hit by, Airlines uh, is, a, is one of the best in the yeah, world, they're yeah, real good. Yeah, TWA 800, I know from my own military and other contacts, it was hit by a naval missile. Uh, so that aircraft, by the way, the debris landed near my brother's home, which is on the south shore of Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, and Kevin, he actually saw the debris and actually uh, pulled a lot of debris and had special ceremonies down on the coast out there. It's what's called Mahone Bay. Uh, I think that this was either hit by a uh, missile directed energy weapon or it's a possibility it was hit with a meteor. Uh, there was no well, advanced I, warning. I, another thing, Dr. Bill, it may well be sitting on, on a runway in Dea Garcia. Uh, yeah, it's possible. It's possible that they, the Chinese have been trying to, to exert their uh, prowess in terms of electronically taking over aircraft. Because the Global Hawk system, all aircraft Boeing are rigged actually to be taken over by remote control and driven uh, flown uh, separately. So, uh, knowing the Chinese, they probably got the technology from us, or we gave it to well, them. Well, that's how they flew the planes uh, into yeah, the, yeah, the World Trade Towers. Exactly. So my guess is this was probably either remotely controlled and driven away by terrorists or people on the ground that had the ability to take over the aircraft, or it was hit by a directed energy weapon, a missile, or a meteor. Uh, there's really no other possibilities. I don't think regular terrorism of like some guy getting on there that's from Iran. I think they tried to say, uh, and then well, that, all that weird photo was photoshopped too. Right. So, so those two but, guys. Did. Yeah, you wonder. There's probably a story within the story on this, but uh, I think the real big story right now is that the world economy is teetering, and all of this dance with Russia is a made-for-TV movie because there are both Russian moves and American and European moves that meant that behind the scenes they were sort of coordinating this dance. Uh, in other words, the Maidan party and the supporters of, of Yanukovych had to stand down on Russian orders. There were auctions by the Maidan party and the shooters that actually shot both Russian and, and protesters in the audience, which means that there had to be uh, special forces brought in there from outside, like Israeli, American, British, etc. Uh, and they were on orders to you actually kill FDR. both of them. FDR yeah, so. said if something happens in politics, you can count on the fact that it was planned. Right, but there had to be some, if you want to call it some degree of collaboration, white hat, black hat going on in this situation. And that tells me this is a big made-for-TV distraction to the real fact that they're going to collapse the world economy and, come, and make us come out of it maybe six months or a year from now after a series of crises with an authentication biometric world currency otherwise known as the mark. And that's coming. Uh, be beast. Right, because yeah, that's, right that's, now the current system cannot sustain itself. Uh, there's so much debt in the world since 2008. The world debt's increased by 40 percent, and it means that uh, the that even the derivatives market can't make money anymore. They they were able to make money, but now it's at the point where it's not possible. So, uh, you know, I, I really think that we're teetering on a major correction. But remember, they want to correct the dollar. They want to create a basket of world currencies. 
they want to have, bring Russia and China in in some kind of a deal, along with a PG, peace treaty in the Middle East. And I think it's all tied together in one nice little basket. You got a peace treaty in the Middle East. You got the territorial control of the air, oil, and gas fields for Russia. Everybody gets something, in other words. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think you're right, and 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 the, the the real winners are the Illuminati, the global banking cartel. Of course, they they, 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 get, they 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 get their one world currency. Their, plus, their they electric. get the Russian, they Not get the, the Russian uh, Jewish oligarchs who aren't integrated to the world banking system integrated. Putin uh, doesn't get uh, shamed anymore; they get treated with quote respect, you know, like Sylvester Stallone want respect. Uh, and I think that you're going to see uh, the, the uh, shame. Of Obama is going to is going to be replaced by a messianic view that he brought peace to the Middle East along with Joe Biden and, and John Kerry. He looks like Lurch oh, from yeah. the Adams family, and, and so we're. I think that uh, when I talked to Mark Biltz, which I caught him driving, he was up in Washington State driving today, getting back from a number of things, and he's making more documentary films. We're trying to get him on in the next few weeks. That uh, these different dates actually kind of pre- precede. The Shemitah year, uh, financial catastrophe, uh, and the start of the tribulation, I believe, will have to occur biblically on a Sakat. And with the blood moons, that would most likely be uh, September 28, 2015. And I'm not setting a date here, but I'm saying if we're watching all the signs, this one is high in the checklist. Let's put it that way. This, this is like fits all of the criteria of a biblical sign in the heaven and tells us that if there isn't a peace treaty, there's almost certainly going to be a b- really big Middle Eastern war and a conflict with Russia on this borderlands between East and West and Ukraine and Belarus, etc., which means this is going to go nuclear real fast, which means we're talking about hours, not days or weeks. So I think a peace treaty is going to happen, uh, which means if you actually work out the, you know, if you get Mark Biltz's calendar, go to El Shaddai Ministries.com and get the calendar and the book and the DVD. What you'll see is that we probably have uh, about 16 months until the tribulation starts, and another two and a half, uh, sorry, three and a half years before the war is. The first half of the tribulation is a false peace, which allows us to get the truth out to the people who want to be real believers, and then the last half of the tribulation is the real war of Armageddon, which starts with Passover, with the sacrifice cut off 30 days before in Yom uh, Kippur. And uh, the tri- literally the tribulations, if you want to call it the, the ugly part, the, not the false peace part, but the ugly part starts on Passover again in the middle of the seven years. So if the and first day is the con- we, yeah, we come back, we, we got to talk about the three other national breakups underway. Yeah, all kinds of them. Uh, all over the world, we're seeing uh, groups or populations or cities or, or uh, territories like Scotland break away. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Um, there's a number of other countries that are breaking up. One of them, notably, is Canada. And this is since the 70s, the Parti Quebecois has been very powerful. We have Venice about to leave, possibly Italy. Uh, where else? I mean, breakups are happening all over the place. Yeah, uh, Quebec. Uh, of course, Scotland. Um, I, there, I have to be careful about some of the things I say about Quebec because I do have a little bit of inside information, and I have these yeah, you don't need to get honorific that, but, uh, uh, hereditary offices of state in Canada, uh, governor yeah, exactly. of Canada, and Lord Lieutenant, and all that, uh, which really don't mean that much, but it, they're, they're historic novelty. Uh, but. Yeah, uh, in, in Quebec, here's the problem. Here's the problem that, that is influencing all this. And the fourth one really is Catatonia in Spain. And that is we're in a global economic depression. And people are upset. They're mad. Uh, uh, most people don't know all the details. Uh, Americans, sadly, tend to be less politically educated than Europeans. Uh, so in Europe, you that's have because a, our media, a, our media are absolutely um, are much more uh, aggressive at dumbing down the population. Uh, and it, there's been a great concentration. Uh, Fifteen years ago, sixteen years ago, when I was uh, looking to start the fourth national evening newscast, there was a large number of players. Now there are only six firms that control uh, over ninety-five, ninety-six percent of the American say, mainstream media. How do you, how do you say Big Brother? 
Or Big Sister, I guess we're talking about Napolitano. Cartel. Or Big Sister, like Janet Yellen and, and Napolitano, Big Sister. Yeah, well, they they, they keep the the, the main, mainstream news media keeps the public, uh, well, the, like uh, mushroom farmers raise mushrooms, they feed them manure and keep them in the dark, and yeah, that's exactly. uh, yeah. Okay, so you've got uh, this Quebec thing, and uh, Canada has come fairly close a couple times to to breaking away. Now it appears uh, they're calling uh, just uh, yesterday they called uh, elections in the province of Quebec. And it appears that the Independence Party will be uh, going to win probably an outright majority. Um, the last time they came within a few, uh, less than a point, uh, away from uh, achieving uh, an independence vote. But right now, the party, the, the, the support for that is about 30-some percent. But the election hasn't started. We'll see. One of the things that's driving are disgusted. People are upset uh, by by the fact that the, the, the economy is so horrible. And young people, I mean, there's more young people living uh, with their parents now than probably any time. I'm talking about people even into their 30s. Uh, okay, so that's one thing in Quebec. In Scotland, uh, I'm a Scottish girl, have a lot of contacts, have for 30-some years, and I have to tell you that unless the uh, economic depression ends, and ends very quickly in the United Kingdom. My analysis is that uh, Scotland will almost certainly vote uh, for independence, and that will be the end of the United Kingdom. Now well, we know that uh, the, the, the stop uh, the stop last year, where they were pulled back the Parliament, the British Parliament pulled back from a war in Syria, was basically, you know, the uh, parliamentarians have said, "You're crazy. We can't. You know, the country's falling apart." And they knew that the cost of doing a war against Syria was going to bankrupt uh, the United Kingdom. Well, it wasn't so, just that. I, it, it was, it was uh, a little, was, uh, uh, narcissism because the, uh, the, the MPs, uh, nothing realized, we're going to die. Yeah, you or do we're need oxygen. We're going, to be in a, we're going to be in a military cave for the rest of our lives trying to survive the, the nonsense. Right. So they, they, they pulled the rug out. Uh, and uh, uh, don't underestimate the role of God in all this. You know, God is is the creator of everything. Satan is just a loser, and uh, God uh, God didn't ordain the world to die uh, right. or, or Armageddon to yeah. begin. Then, is, anyway, that why we call, okay. is that why we call these guys uh, Luciferians? Absolutely, they're both they losers are. and they're fairies. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Lu uh, Lucifer is is a pathetic <laughs> creature, you know. He really is. But anyway, okay. So in Scotland, uh, I, you know, the Scots, uh, the English bribed uh, the Scottish uh, parliamentarians and, and Scots peers many years ago to get him to sign the Treaty of Union. And uh, in the Treaty of Union, the independent Scottish Parliament, not the the regional Parliament uh, which exists today, but the fully sovereign Scottish Parliament, which was called the Three Estates, uh, only went into adjournment. And uh, if the English try anything underhanded, all the Scots have to do is bring us Scottish peers. Now, not peers who are from Scotland, but persons who hold a Scottish peerage title, like I do, to sit with the rest of the Scots uh, Parliament, that is, the representatives from the uh, from the shires, the, co the the counties, and the cities, and that would reconstitute the three estates, which is a fully sovereign Parliament, and that Parliament can declare independence. So, I, I it's going to be very difficult for the English to prevent the breakup. I think Northern Ireland might want to yeah. stay with with England, be, but I think the Welsh will will probably say, "Nah, we're going to be." Off. It's going to be irrelevant anyway because what the global globalists want is they want the Federal Reserve Bank to become the World Reserve Bank. Uh, they yeah. want to make it uh, pegged to uh, perhaps uh, fractionally to gold, but also uh, lock the currencies in like uh, Bretton Woods for Russia and uh, China, which is a centrally controlled economy. And the Chinese are very nervous about the idea now of this super bank, almost like a uh, bank of international settlements fused with the Fed Reserve to become a world super bank, uh, you know, with a cape on and everything. Uh, will take over everything. Every country will be under centrally controlled by this organization. And, and your money will be a digit in a, in a digital account. Mm. And if you get out of line, all they have to do is press a button and your money evaporates. Do, do you know what the uh, T-shirts they wear around the uh, this new bank in the future? 
They wear a T-shirt that says, if you're not good, I'll press Alt-Delete. <laughs> they can. I mean, literally. Or I think, by the way, there's a great opportunity for gold. I think gold is about to go through the ceiling. Oh, I think so. Gold and gold stashers. I also prepper supplies and uh, things can get out of the market quickly. Uh, I think a big dollar correction is coming. But by the way, it'll seem temporarily good for America. They'll bring back robotic factories here. The economy will boom here. The third world will starve to death because also you'll see the disappearance of the middle class. Uh, when people are signing up for Obamacare, they're signing up for welfare. It's already funded through to 2023. Well, with, and, and with, you know, uh, some people think, oh, well, I'm, I'm not really middle class. I'm worth two or three million. I'm doing fine. No. Well, let me tell you, the, the lower upper class will go with the middle class. And part of the middle, middle, uh, part of the middle upper class will go, too. It will be a dog-eat-dog -dog survival thing, and only the billionaires will be on top. And even some of them will go down. Um, yeah. But also, uh, getting continuing on with this, in Italy right now, there's this big election in Venice and in that region uh, to uh, whether they're, it's a several day election, it takes about a week, um, whether they should break apart and uh, reestablish the Venetian Republic, which, by the way, existed for over a thousand years. And um, it's hard to say. They, they may win. You know, one thing triggers another. And uh, that happened in 1848 and various times in history. Uh, this Ukrainian break-off could have a big influence on Italy. It could have an influence on Quebec. And it could have a big influence uh, on the Scottish vote and also in Catatonia in Spain. Uh, and that's kind of a blowback. That's kind of a, a un, unanticipated uh, side effect of what's happening. I think, but it's more scripted than we think, though. Uh, even when we see, uh, you know, the, the withdrawal support for Yanukovych by the Russians, when we see uh, this uh, snipers apparently, and it's again third-party reporting, so we can't prove it's absolutely true uh, that the snipers were shooting both the Ukrainian citizens who were protesting and uh, the Russian supporters of Yanukovych. So uh, I'm very suspicious that both Europe and the West, the United States and Russia, were scripted in to actually play parts in this made-for-TV movie called Ukraine 2014. You don't want to miss it. Four-dimensional movie in your news every day. <laughs> and that's what it is. It's a made for made for consumption because you can see walking out of this, Putin knows already in advance he's got a deal coming. He has a deal, and on the, on the face of it, they have to save face the West. Uh, Russia's got to re-exert its power. Everybody's going to get a piece of the action, as they say, like in the mob, when they uh, all the houses meet. Uh, you know, I don't trust that there's any good guys here. They're all bad guys. Yeah, I'm afraid you're probably right. And like my friend from Belarusia at Storage Tech years ago, he says, "We in Russia and Belarusia." When the Soviet Union end, all we do is we change hats. <laughs> and I like that we change yeah, hats. Yeah, I was God, folks. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> hour two coming up, and uh, John Moore will be here for hour three. I'll be on hour three tonight on the Rents Network at 9 to 10 p.m. Pacific time with a major update on Fukushima and much more.